Hi, so there's a lot of people in Trinidad and Tobago and around the world who are really confused about the vaccine. Some are undecided, some are pro-vaccine, some are anti-vaccine. So I asked a few of my KVTV hosts to answer a few questions. Question number one, did you ever had COVID before? I have never had COVID prior to taking the vaccine. No, I've never had COVID. Um, Did I ever have COVID prior to taking the vaccine? Yes, no, or don't know. That's a kind of a a loaded question. But um, the answer is uh, essentially I don't know. So I'm not trying to judge anyone with their answers. I'm just giving you their answers as they told it to me. So if you answered yes to question one, how do you know if you've had COVID before? Um, well, based on what the information that is out there, um, I've never experienced the symptoms, um, the common symptoms, like the, the body pains, some persons get sore throat, um, a loss of appetite, loss of smell, those sorts of things. I have not experienced it, so for me, that would say that I possibly have never contracted it. The answer is uh, essentially I don't know if I had, and if I knew that I had COVID, I would not take the vaccine since doing so would diminish my ability or the ability of my immune system to respond to other pathogens and even strains and mutations of COVID itself. I know I didn't have COVID prior to taking the vaccine because I took a test and it came back negative. So question number three is, have you ever been tested for COVID before? And um, I would have thought that would have been pertinent when you're taking a vaccine. Um, Let's check on the answers. Uh, Have I been tested for COVID? And the answer is absolutely not. Uh, And if I desire to be tested, I would take an antibody blood test and not subject myself to a PCR test by having anyone stick a swab sterilized with ethylene oxide, a known carcinogen. No, I've never tested for it or never had reason to. So you may or may not have gathered that the host here are split into different categories. We have the vaccinated, the undecided and the anti-vaxxers and they'll be asked obviously slightly different questions. Yes, I was asked if I had COVID prior to taking the vaccine. Question four, do you think a non-vaccinated person can pass on COVID to a vaccinated person? I do believe a vaccinated person can contract the virus from an unvaccinated person, hence the reason why we all need to become fully vaccinated as a nation. Yes, a non-vaccinated person can pass it on to a vaccinated person. Um, Being vaccinated doesn't prevent you from, from getting the virus, but what they're saying is it may lessen the complications associated with getting it. Um, but yes, a vaccinated, an unvaccinated person can pass it on to a vaccinated person and a vaccinated person can pass it on to a non-vaccinated person and vice versa. Uh, either way, uh, a, a vaccinated person can pass it to a non-vaccinated person and a non-vaccinated person can pass it to a vaccinated person. Um, you know, I think, you know, we, I just call this, uh, this is an age uh, with multiple names. One of the age I, I call this is the age of menticide. So I'd like to introduce you to Dr. Sunil Dand, who's an internal medicine physician who is from the UK, but I believe he works in the USA. And he posts a lot of videos, not just about COVID, but also fitness, diet, etc. And he states that there's a lot of weird things happening with censorship because he's had his channel. Um, some videos have been removed. He's had his um, his channel has been threatened to be taken down totally. And not just him, but other um, scientists, doctors and media people who 
might bring up points that are factual, but have them removed by whatever powers that be. And I think this is one of the things that is scaring some of the public, the general public. So Dr. Sunil Dand has kindly agreed to answer uh, three questions um, that I presented to him on COVID. And the first one was, as a virus mutates, are the variants deadlier, more infectious, or both or other? And he answered, in typical previous pandemics, the variants are less lethal. Number two is, if an asymptomatic person doesn't want to take the vaccine, are they putting themselves at risk? And he says yes, especially depending on their unique risk factor profile. And he's made a video and there's a link in the description for that. And question number three is, should a vaccinated person avoid contact with a non-vaccinated person? And he says that there's not much evidence for this unless a non-vaccinated person has known COVID or exposures. So I'd like to thank the doctor for taking his time to answer those questions. Question five for the vaccinated people is, did you mind what vaccine you received? Yes, I wasn't comfortable taking the Sinopharm. So the next question is for the undecided and the anti-vaxxers. Do you believe you would survive if you caught COVID-19? And I try to eat as healthy as possible. I eat extra portions of vegetables. I've cut down my meat intake. I try and I, I eat junk food probably like once a week or every two weeks, something like that. Um, I keep fit by mixing concrete and that's hard work sometimes harder than going to a gymnasium i also try and follow protocols like wear my mask and sanitize but i know that sometimes like when you're around friends and family sometimes the masks are removed i think maybe it's uh, my chances of getting covid because it says here yeah, looking at it logically my chances are slim to none but there are three reasons i think i will live the first is that i will not be going to any hospital the second is I've done my best to educate and prepare myself, uh, not only for COVID, for what is coming next, because we are the conjecture in the world um, that is uh, very, very interesting. Uh, so COVID is not the only threat. Uh, there is famine uh, on the horizon. There is a war um, on the horizon. There's a collapse of the American empire, which is inevitable as surely as the sun does shine. And, um, Lastly, uh, one of the reasons uh, is that I've instilled, I followed the instructions given in Revelation that I should come out of her so that I may not be a partaker of her plagues. I think based on the fact that it is a virus that affects um, your immunity, your immune system um, roughly, that once your immune system is, is up to standard, up to par, and well, persons who don't have any underlying issues have a higher likelihood of being able to survive. So, I think yes, um, you know, it is there is a high chance of surviving it. Um, but I think a lot of persons who have passed away, as we had we have seen locally, basically, um, they have reported that those persons were either older or had um, a lot of underlying issues um, for the younger persons maybe they didn't know that they had underlying issues and that might have been the possible cause of them or their body not be being able to fight off the virus how long did the vaccination process take the vaccination process took at least 15 minutes do you believe you could pass COVID-19 to another person? No, because I don't plan to get it. But anyone can pass it to anyone. I'm single and I have stopped fucking. Yes, I have stopped fucking. I, I have no interest in visiting relationships. Yes, I believe I can pass it on at this point. Anybody, um, as 
one of the other questions asked, either vaccinated or unvaccinated, yes. Yes, this is the most infectious, this is, is, is more contagious than the flu, as far as what I can see, so yes. What was the main reason you took the vaccine? The main reason I took the vaccine was for health reasons and self-preservation. If vaccines were mandated, which one would you take if you could choose? I suppose for me it would be either the Sinopharm or the AstraZeneca. Possibly the Cuban vaccine. Um, I think that's the closest thing that we have to a vaccine or push come to shove Sinopharm. The answer is none. But my investigation determined that the Sinopharm would probably be the best option because it is a inactivated whole virus. Did you feel pressured into taking the vaccine or is it something that you wanted to take? I didn't feel pressured into taking the vaccine. I wanted to take it. What is the main reason for you not taking the vaccine? You know, I have a very long answer here. Maybe I should just read it. I have a multitude of reasons. The first one is trust. I spoke of that already. I do not trust the people providing the vaccine. Historically, I was born on a plantation into a war in which the enemy defines me as less than human and has never had my best interests at hand. I suppose like I'm being swamped with information from both sides. And I tell you, for me, just making this video has me even more confused than ever because I'm doing a lot of research now. And, um, it is it is confusing when when you really delve into it. But what I do know is that um, ninety nine. It's very hard for me to find a doctor that says do not take the vaccine. So that is more encouraging. One of my main reasons for not taking it is I think that it's still too early. I think there's still not enough data as to the side effects. Um, and adverse effects associated with the vaccine. Did you have any side effects from the first dose? Yes, after taking the AstraZeneca, I experienced mild headaches. Were you looking forward to your second dose? I am in fact looking forward to my second dose. Would you prefer to be served by a vaccinated or non-vaccinated salesperson? Um, as long as COVID protocols are followed, uh, that, that wouldn't really bother me. Would I prefer to be jabbed by a vaccinated or unvaccinated person? Well, as far as I am concerned, all vaccinated persons should be wrong. Yes, it doesn't matter to me um, if I'm served by a vaccinated or unvaccinated person. Um, I think we're reaching a point where it's becoming, um, it's basically a discrimination against persons, against their choice. What do you think of people that take the vaccine? Well, some of them are my best friends and I, I worry about them, which is why, I, another reason I didn't want to speak on this subject, um, because the people closest to me have already made their decision. Um, and then I speak here about scripture, the fact that um, there's a scripture in Matthew that says that those who seek to save their lives shall surely lose it. I think people that take the vaccine are just sad people and people have to make choices and decisions based on their circumstances. I know some persons might have taken it because of work. I think that if you want to take the vaccine, take the vaccine for sure. And for the second doses, was the process just as simple as the first dose? Would you advise someone to take the vaccine? Yes, I would strongly advise everyone be fully vaccinated for their own benefit. What is the best way to not get COVID? So, yeah, just follow the protocols. Sanitize, um, wear your mask. Uh, I, I think people who don't take this thing seriously because it is real um, and I think the best way not to, to get COVID is to take, treat it very seriously. But I think social distancing 
ensuring that you're at least six feet apart, washing of your hands, um, trying to eat as best as you can, trying to exercise, um, building your immune system, resting enough. Um, I think all of these little things are contributors to helping you have a chance at um, not getting COVID or ensuring that your immune system is ready. Well, me, um, I personally say to isolate to operate. Um, listen to the science. The science says zinc, uh, vitamin D3, um, fruits and vegetables, proper fruits and vegetables, um, getting um, sunshine, getting exercise, um, a whole bunch of other things that can, you know, tune up your immune system. What would make you take the vaccine? More information, um, more realistic data regarding side effects, um, more time in terms of them being able to work out the kinks with the vaccines themselves. Well, not even at the point of a gun. Um, I don't have to work, and even if I did have to work, I, I can be a digital nomad, I can work remotely. Uh, I have traveled, so I, I don't really need to go and travel. Uh, there are some other places I would have loved to go on. Um, if the state mandates that you need to be vaccinated to, vaccinated to go to the grocery or to the bank, well, then that raises a, a question of, of being in a state of war, personally, and becoming an enemy of the state. Because if you, if you decide that I can't eat, or I can't access the money that I work very hard for, um, I would first of all, you know, try to be as wise as a serpent and peaceful as a dove, a dove as they would say. And, and I know this is true and Tobago, this is the wild, wild west. Um, there's always a way to circumvent whatever it is happening in the land. So if I had to travel, then yes, I would definitely obviously have to take the vaccine and, um, work it's very interesting to see what's going to be happening with um these potential mandated vaccines um because that, that is another very contentious issue there such a measure requires the ability to answer the questions of millions of those who are skeptical and one of the chief ones that i've heard is this but what if i already got covid Natural immunity has been shown to be just as effective, if not more so, at defending against future infection from COVID in addition to hospitalization and death. Should that not be taken into account? Note, it is not just a crank or a pundit like me who is asking this. The very day of Biden's policy was announced, Dr. Sanjay Gupta of CNN asked Dr. Fauci if an exception should be made. Here was his answer. And just, and just real quickly, um there was a study that came out of Israel about natural immunity. And basically the headline was that natural immunity provides a lot of protection, even better than the vaccines alone. Um, how, what, do, what are people to make of that? So, so as we talk about vaccine mandates, there are, I get calls all the time. People say, I've already had COVID, I'm protected. And now the study says maybe even more protected than the vaccine alone. Should they also get the vaccine? How do you make the case to them? You know, that's a really good point, Sanjay. I don't have a really firm answer for you on that. That's something that we're going to have to discuss regarding the durability of the response. So uh, he has got no answer. Even worse, when Fauci was pressed this weekend by natural immunity, by Meet the Press, he actually admitted people who get COVID have stronger immunity and that their immunity is higher than two doses of a vaccine. But his only caveat is that the durability of immunity is unclear. But for those of us who are honest and pro-vaccine, we also know that the answer to the longevity of vaccine protection is also up in the air.